James W.C. Pennington was born a slave on the eastern shore of Maryland around 1807. He witnessed the brutality of slavery firsthand. He grew in the ownership of the Tillman family, witnessing many violent beatings and vicious racial tirades from both his overseers and his owner. In his autobiography, Pennington reflects on the savagery of the overseer Blackstone. He was an extremely cruel man. He always carried a long hickory whip. I once found one in the yard, and boy-like was using it for a horse. Seeing me with it, he fell upon me and flogged me most cruelly. From that point on, I lived in constant dread of that man, and I have lain for hours in a wood or behind a fence to hide from his eye. In 1830, he was firm on his desire to seek freedom, and he made a plan. With a small chunk of cornbread in his pocket and a bundle of clothes, Pennington left. He knew Pennsylvania was a free state, but he did not know how to identify the border and was unsure of his direction. During his escape, he was apprehended and detained twice, yet fled and continued onward. After many nights alone on the road and hiding in the woods, he finally arrived at the Pennsylvania home of the abolitionist and Quaker William Wright. There, he found shelter, religion, education, and freedom. However, he did not find safety as he had hoped. Pennington, like other slaves, such as Frederick Douglass and Harriet Tubman, never felt safe, not for years following their escape. Even in a free state, there was no safety for a fugitive except in lurking places or under the care of judicious friends, who could be entrusted not only with liberty, but also with life itself. Paralleling his story of the young boy and Blackstone, as a fugitive, Pennington would once more live in constant dread and fear, and again find himself hiding, this time to avoid recapture. Eventually, Pennington made his way to New York. There he changed his name to hide from slave catchers. Despite his anxiety, Pennington became a public figure. He was a teacher and an activist. He participated in the anti-slavery movement on a regional, national, and international level. He entered into the Christian ministry as a preacher, and despite all of his successes, he felt a constant lurking fear. He kept his fugitive status secret. He wrote to Harriet Beecher Stowe, a longtime abolitionist and author of Uncle Tom's Cabin, I married a wife, and I did not tell her I was a fugitive. None of my friends knew it. I knew not the means of safety, and hence I was constantly in fear of meeting with someone who would betray me. In 1845, Pennington told his secret to a close friend, John Hooker. At last, he felt some relief in sharing his secret with someone, having never before divulged a fact to any living person. However, his relief was brief, as concerns grew following the passage of the Fugitive Slave Act in 1850. The law protected slave owners and threatened black people, free or enslaved, requiring the return of any suspected runaway slaves and all officials and citizens of free states to comply. To escape the threat of recapture, Pennington chose to extend his European lecture tour. And finally, in 1851, Pennington experienced his first sense of relaxation from the stress of escape and hiding for years. While in Europe, some of his Scottish friends raised the funds to purchase Pennington's freedom for the sum of $150. He returned to the United States, a legally free man.